Hi, my name is Jake, and I am a bookish drummer. So for this video, I will be doing my book unhaul. I'll be talking about all of the books that I will be getting rid of. Stacy actually helped me uh, reorganize my shelves to make them look a lot better, and they, they're just way more organized than they were. And because of that, I had to like rearrange some stuff, and I'm actually going to be unhauling a lot of books. Probably books that I'm never going to reread again, or books that I just have had for a long time that I know that I'm probably not going to get to anytime soon. So I'm just going to go ahead and get rid of them. I'm probably either going to donate them or take them up to Second and Charles, see if I can get any store credit for them. I used to take books to my local used bookstore, Paperbacks Inc., but they don't do um, store credit anymore, so I can't really take it to them. So it's either Second and Charles or Goodwill or, you know, just give them to someone. I don't know. But either way, I'm getting rid of all of these books. So without further ado, let's go ahead and jump right into it. All right, so this first book is pretty simple. It's uh, A Daughter's Daughter, which is by Agatha Christie, but under her other pen name, Mary Westmacott. Uh, I have two versions of this exact book, so I don't need two copies, so I'm going to get rid of it easy enough. Uh, the next book is Jar of Hearts by Jennifer Hillier. And the reason I'm going to get rid of this is I, I am interested in reading it, but it's also unscribed. So I could just listen to it there. So I don't really necessarily need a physical copy of that. I've also had this book for quite a while. And I've ke I kept telling myself, oh, I'll read it around Christmas time. But I'm, I'm never going to read this book. It's called 12 Drummers Drumming. It's about a mystery, or it's a mystery that's about um, this person who gets murdered and gets like stuffed into a drum. It's probably not really that much to do with actual drumming, but I, th I figured it would be a fun book to read around the holidays, but I've had it for years and I've never gotten around to it, so let's get rid of it. I'm also going to get it rid of uh, Blood Meridian by Cormac McCarthy. Not a bad book by any means, but it was only pretty good. It wasn't like an absolute favorite of mine, and I don't really feel the need to go back and reread it. So while I did enjoy my time with it, I'm probably never going to reread it. And then this next book is actually a book that I loved, but it's in hardcover. So I will eventually get the paperback. And that is Carrie Soto is Back by Taylor Jenkins Reid. I loved this book. I think I gave it four and a half stars. It was excellent, but of course, I usually go ahead and get the paperback once that comes out. So, unhauling that. And then I've got some, like, young adult middle grade books that I'm probably never going to get to or I will never reread. The first one being Roald Dahl's Tales of the Unexpected. Now, I've actually never read any Roald Dahl. I know there's, like, James and the Giant Peach and Matilda, which, you know, I grew up watching those movies, but probably never gonna read like those actual books and I figured like this would be a fun way to dive into Roald Dahl's stuff because it's short stories I believe but had it for a while probably never gonna get to it and then also this is a book that I've read and that I really enjoyed but again probably never gonna reread it and that would be Sadie by Courtney Summers this had a really cool podcast element to it so if I ever go back and reread it it would be through the audiobook so probably never going to actually physically reread it. And then this book, I'm a little sad because I, I actually bought this book at Paperbacks Inc., my local used bookstore, and it's like a local author like who lives in Virginia. But probably never going to get to it. And that would be Extant by Sarah Newland. I think it's like a YA dystopian duology, like the first book. Uh, probably never going to get to it. I mainly bought it to like support them, but I'm probably never going to get to it. And then the last sort of like middle grade young adult book is The Golden Compass by Philip Pullman. I've heard good things about it. I've heard myth things about it. And of course, like with a lot of these books, I've had it for a while, 
but am I realistically going to get to this anytime soon? Probably not. I've also got a few fantasy books to talk about, one of them being Perdido uh, Street Station by China Melville. Uh, I originally bought this book because my buddy Narsol over on Discord was starting to read this and he was like, oh yeah, it's really good. But then I, after I bought it, he has since said like, oh, it's fine. It's more like a three-star book. And the way that he describes it, I'm probably not going to be terribly interested in it. So I'm just going to go ahead and chuck it. And then the next book I have to talk about is The High King's Tomb by Kristen Britton. And this is the third Green Rider book, I believe. I originally bought a lot of the Green Rider books because I read the first book and actually enjoyed it. But then I got to the second book and I wasn't really liking it and I ended up DNFing it. So I'm going to go ahead and get rid of this copy. And I'm actually giving uh, Stacy a few of my copies. So Green Rider is just not for me, but I know a lot of people love it. And then another book that I've had for a while that I'm also probably never going to read is Rogues, which is not written by George R. R. Martin, but it's edited by him and Gardner Doze. Uh, I can never pronounce his name, Dozos. And it's got a lot of, you know, cool authors in here. And I think it's you know, short stories that are based around the idea of rogues, but I'm probably never going to get to this. I've also got some nonfiction to talk about. I was kind of like scrolling through my nonfiction, just looking at like stuff that I'm either never going to reread or stuff that I could probably just get away with listening to on audio. Uh, one of the books is uh, Inside Out, which is a history of Pink Floyd. I was super excited to read this because Pink Floyd is one of my all-time favorite bands, and it's actually written by the drummer, Nick Mason, who is actually only, he is the only member of Pink Floyd to play on all of their albums. Really underrated drummer, and I was thinking like, oh, it'd be cool to get a drummer's perspective on one of my favorite bands. Uh, the book was fine. Like, it wasn't great. There were some, like, little tidbits here and there that were cool. A lot of it, like, I either knew or a lot of it just seemed irrelevant to the band. And I was kind of disappointed with that. I only gave it three stars. So I will be unhauling that. I also have Billy Crystal's Still Foolin' Him. I'm not, like, a huge Billy Crystal fan, but I picked it up at Goodwill for, like, a dollar or two. And it was pretty funny. But I'm probably never going to read it again. So why did I keep it? I don't know. But I'm getting rid of it. I also have Flea uh, from the Red Hot Chili Peppers. His memoir, Acid for the Children. This one was good in the moment. But the way it was written is like hundreds of chapters. And they're like little vignettes of his life. So I didn't really feel like we got a complete story. And a lot of it, like after you read it, you kind of just forget about it. And it also sucks because this is all about his young adult, young life and young adult life before he joined the Red Hot Chili Peppers, which is pretty disappointing. Like I wanted tidbits of Red Hot Chili Peppers, but I think the way that he wrote this, he's probably going to write a sequel, which is about his older life. But yeah, I'm probably never going to reread this. And yeah, very forgettable. I also have one of my dad's books, which I read and did enjoy, but again, probably never going to reread it. Uh, that would be The Mannings. And my dad was a huge uh, Eli Manning fan, New York Giants. So, of course, I got this for him for Christmas one year, and he loved it. And it's all about, you know, like Eli Manning, Peyton Manning. They're really good NFL quarterbacks, and their dad was actually an NFL quarterback too, Archie Manning. This book was pretty good. But again, never going to reread it. In these two books, I definitely am interested in reading them. But at the same time, probably I'm going to go with the audio versions better just because they're narrated by the authors that they're about, of course. And the first one would be Becoming by Michelle Obama. I've had this book for years. I'm never going to read it physically, but I will be tempted to someday read it or listen to it, I, I believe, on Audible. So I will get to that eventually, but I don't necessarily need the physical. Same thing with Trevor Noah's Born a Crime. I'm actually going to read this in 2023. A lot of people have recommended it to me, and I'm super interested in it, but I don't necessarily need the physical copy. I'm just going to listen to the audiobook. And the rest of the books I'm going to unhaul are actually all horror books. So let's go ahead and jump into those. 
The first one is not a bad book by any means, but again, probably never going to reread it. In fact, I'd probably watch the movie over and over again, but not the book. Well, read the book. I'm not going to watch the book over. Y you know what I mean. Uh, it's Jaws by Peter Benchley. Now, of course, the movie is an instant classic. Steven Spielberg's first movie. It created the summer blockbuster. Great movie. The book is actually pretty good, except for like one or two chapters that were like meh. But the book overall was like a three and a half, four star book. Pretty good. It reminded me a little bit of Michael Crichton. But again, probably never going to reread it. So go ahead and unhaul it. This next book I DNF'd super quickly, even though I was very excited by the premise. And that would be Nod by Adrian Barnes. And this is all about like sleep deprivation. People are like all across the world, except for like 1% of the population can't fall asleep. And they're having like these like psychotic or uh, psychosis moments where they're just like, what is happening? And so it's pretty, pretty cool premise. But the main reason I DNF'd it was because they misquoted Pulp Fiction, which is a deadly sin because of course, Pulp Fiction is my all time favorite movie. And they misquoted Pulp Fiction. And I was just like, you know what? Fuck this. I don't need to read this. So yeah, d that's a definite on haul. Oh, this next book. Uh, I I want to read it. But at the same time, when am I ever going to have the time to? And do I really want to read it? Probably not. That would be Strange Highways by Dean Koontz. Uh, at, in college, once I started reading Stephen King, like just started reading for the first time since like, middle school basically I started also getting into Dean Koontz and I've read a ton of Dean Koontz I've probably read like 35 or 40 Dean Koontz books in my lifetime but I, I've quickly fallen out of love with his writing style I've went back and tried to reread some of his stuff and I'm just like why did I like this but this one is interesting because it's a short story collection in a I think there's a one novella in here I've never read a Dean Koontz short story and I'm wondering or I was wondering if I'd be interested in it, but I'm like, it's Dean Koontz. It's still going to be not that great. So I'm probably just going to leave it alone. I will also be unhauling Cujo by Stephen King. Don't worry. I love, the, I love Cujo, so it's not like I hate the book. But actually, Stacy brought me a copy that she found at her local used bookstore that is much better than mine. I love this cover. I don't really love this cover, so of course I don't need two copies, so I will be unhauling that one and keeping this much better one. I'll also be unhauling Scratches by Joshua Marcella. Uh, I think this is like a debut horror novella. It had moments of goodness, moments of brilliance, but overall the pacing was a little wonky, the writing wasn't all there, and I think I ended up giving it three stars. It had good moments, but it also didn't really leave that much of a lasting impression on me. I would be interested to try more stuff by him, but this is just a debut novella and it wasn't that great. Speaking of horror novellas, I'm actually going to be getting rid of The Goners by L. Stevenson. Even though I really did enjoy this horror debut novella, I believe the author has plans to write the whole uh, Boatmore Butcher trilogy and release it into one book. So if that happens, I'm not necessarily going to need this copy. So my plan is to unhaul it. And then, of course, speaking of horror novellas, this is easily the worst thing that I've read in 2022. I had to read it because I lost a book bet with Stacy, and it's just a whole mess. But anyway, I ended up having to read uh, this crap, Nymphomaniacs on Big Top Island, which is... <laughs> The first uh, novella in the Floppy Shoes Apocalypse, which was, sounded like a, a, a hilarious title, but you read the book and it's just utter garbage. It's, it's just, it's awful. And yeah, it really put me off book, be book bets with Stacy because just good God, this book was awful and I am getting it the hell out of my house. The next book I have to talk about is The Hunting Season, which I believe is a short story collection of eight ghostly tales for long winter nights. Um, I bought this, I believe, at Second and Charles, and I'm not terribly interested in it anymore, so I'm gonna chuck it. 
I also have A Congregation of Jackals by S. Craig Zaylor. Now, this was pitched to me by my good buddy Narsal as like an anti-Western. And I started this a while ago, maybe even like last year. And it was pretty good, but I had to put it down because I was trying to catch up with other stuff and I never got back into it. And I, I feel like I've read... You know, you know, Blood Meridian, which is probably like the best anti-Western that's probably out there. And that was only fine for me. So I don't feel the nece I don't feel it necessary to go ahead and finish this book. So I'm going to go ahead and unhaul it, even though it wasn't the worst thing I've ever read. And the last book I have to talk about is actually a book that Stacy was going to give to me to read because I was somewhat excited to read it. But she ended up DNFing it with only like less than 100 pages left and sh it was a hard DNF. Uh, and she, you know, sh she was gonna give it to me, but I'm like, I don't know if I wanna read it either. So I, I'm just gonna go ahead and unhaul it for her. And that would be Mexican Gothic by Sylvia Morano Garcia. And of course this is like a booktube darling. Even though it has like a somewhat low rating on Goodreads, like it has a lot of popularity so a lot of people like love this book or are talking about the book so I was interested in reading it but the I read like the twist that happens uh because Stacy was reading it and she was like this is just awful and I was like okay well, let me read what you're reading and I was like this is awful <laughs> and the twist it, like it's supposed to be a horror book but the way she describes it it kind of starts off like with romance and then it's supposed to be like gothic horror, like these dreams, like, oh, is this happening? Or is this, you know, a hallucination? Like, I don't know. And that can be fine sometimes, but then you get the reveal of like what's actually going on and it's hilarious and stupid. <laughs> so I understand completely why she DNF'd it and I don't feel the need to read it either. So uh, let's go ahead and unhaul it. All right, so those are all of the books that I will be unhauling. What did you guys think of my unhaul books? Uh, are there any books in here that you agree with me and that you think I should just get them out of my house? Or are there books that you disagree with me about and you love these books and you think I'm an idiot for getting rid of them? Either way, leave your lovely comments down in the comments below. And of course, if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to the Bookish Drummer YouTube channel and the Bookish Drummer Discord. And if you'd like to further support me, go check out my Patreon page and see what that's about. I also have my Amazon wish list if you'd like to buy me a book. Thank you guys so much for watching and have a fantastic day.